I'm pleased to be here today with Dr. Donna Peterson, Dean of the University of South Florida's College of Public Health, who is also chair of our 14-member COVID-19 task force. Donna is one of the world-class experts we have here at USF on COVID-19. Today, we've asked her to address a number of key questions about vaccination programs that are being distributed around the state of Florida and around the country. Dean Peterson, uh, why should the public trust in a vaccine that was developed and approved in a very short time? Thank you, President Crowell. That's a great question. I know that's been on, on a lot of people's minds. It seems like this just came out of the air, but in ter it turns out COVID-19 is uh, one of the family of coronaviruses. Coronaviruses also cause the common cold. And scientists have been working for years to develop a, a, a vaccine against a coronavirus. So while it seems like this just happened, people have been working on this for years. What allowed this to happen to get to the results so quickly was an unprecedented infusion of resources from around the world and an unprecedented uh, amount of cooperation among scientists and labs around the world. You know, we tend to be a little private, you know, we, we, we like the competition, but in this case, in the case of a global pandemic that was taking lives, the imperative to get that vaccine done quickly got rid of all those, all those obstacles. So, Yes, uh, that push at the end got us where we are, but people have been working on these for years and years and years. So some people in our communities are saying that we should wait to get the vaccine. What, what are the risks of waiting to get the vaccine? So I certainly appreciate why some people have taken a wait and see approach. They wanna see you know, what effect this vaccine has, but I would say there are three reasons why people should not wait, why they should get the vaccine as soon as possible. The first is to protect themselves. The COVID-19 virus is still circulating out there. It is, uh, it's causes, can cause pretty severe illness. It can cause long hauler syndrome as it's been described. People, even if they didn't have severe illness, have these long-term effects that really impact the quality of their lives, their, their ability to work. And it kills. Uh, this, is, this is not a nice virus. It actually uh, has taken um, hundreds of thousands of lives in this country alone. So the first reason to get the vaccine would be to protect yourself. The second reason is um, if you were to be infected, and a lot of people get infected and don't have symptoms, at least early on, and they can infect others. So there may be people in your world and your family and your community that may be at particular risk and you getting infected might cause them to, to become ill. So that's the second reason to get a vaccine, to protect those people around you that you care about. But the third reason, and the one I like best because I'm your public health expert, is that the sooner we get more people vaccinated, we approach that precious herd immunity, which will allow us to drive this virus into the ground. And in some ways, we're kind of in a race against time, against uh, the, the, the new uh, forms of the virus, the UK variant, the Brazilian variant, the South African variant, the more people we can get with the vaccine, we can try to outrun that. So it really is important that when the vaccine is available to you in your community, you meet the eligibility criteria, people should get that vaccine as soon as possible. So you mentioned that the COVID-19 virus has variants that we've heard a lot about in, in the media. So. Could you say a little bit more in explaining this, this idea of the race that we're in? So on the one hand, we're uh, racing to vaccinate as many people as possible. On the other hand, the virus is evolving and adapting. So help us understand that. So as the virus uh, evolves and it mutates and it takes on new forms, um, some appear to be uh, able to cause more infection. Some appear to cause more severe illness. But the virus always needs a host. It has to, it has to live somewhere. And these mutations, uh, to the extent that we can keep them out of hosts, they will, they will die out. So the more vaccine we get into people, I, I like to say it, that closes the door. There's no one home. There's no room at this host. So, as the, so what we don't want to have happen is people not get the vaccine. They are now susceptible to the virus. And if the variants, take hold in a significant portion of the population, then those mutated, the mutations then will spread more, more illness. And because we're still trying to figure out how effective the current vaccines are, we believe they're effective against the UK variant. We don't have enough experience with the other ones yet. 
And again, uh, our fabulous scientists all around the world are racing to come up with a booster that will protect against future variants if that becomes necessary. But we'd rather avoid that. We'd rather get more vaccine into people, uh, help them develop the immunity that should then not allow any of the variants to take hold. That's the race we're talking about. And so the takeaway message is don't be a host. Don't be a host. Get a vaccine, don't be a host. Get a vaccine, don't be a host. Don't give this virus a home. So we all know people who've actually caught COVID-19 and had the disease. Do you recommend that they also get the vaccine? Another great question, yeah. So people might say, well, I've already had it. I'm already immune. Well, like everything else with this virus, we've been learning in real time and we continue to learn in real time. So we're not entirely sure how much immunity having the infection actually uh, provides. So given that we don't yet understand that and we're continuing to learn, it's in everyone's best interest to get that vaccine because that will make sure that you're not um, at risk for being reinfected or again, getting infected and passing it on to, to others. So if we've had the vaccine, how likely is it that we could still transmit the virus to someone else? So um, the first thing I wanna say in response to that is the, the vaccine contains no virus, it's no, no live virus. So, I know I've had a couple of questions recently from people who said, well, I don't want the vaccine because I think it will make me sick and it, it won't. So that's one. But two, again, we're, we're still learning and there was some concern. These vaccines are highly effective, but they're not 100% effective. So people may become infected, but it looks like as time goes on and more people get the vaccine and we can, we can see what happens, we're not seeing a lot of, of people with the vaccine getting, getting infected. So. It's possible, but it seems that the risk is pretty low. So we've heard about the different types of vaccines. So Pfizer, Moderna, now we're hearing a lot about AstraZeneca, especially overseas uh, and in this country as well, although it hasn't yet been approved by the FDA. So what are the differences among these vaccines and what should we know about how they differ? So it's interesting because that question comes up a lot. People are always asking, well, which one is available and which one should I take? And uh, people that you know well here at, at the university, we're so blessed to have so much talent here, have said, well, it's kind of like eating a green M&M or a red M&M. The, the key is to get the vaccine. So the Moderna and the Pfizer are mRNA vaccines. They're a two-dose vaccine, um, high, highly effective against infection and against becoming seriously ill. The Johnson & Johnson is a, is a one-dose vaccine, not quite as effective against infection, but highly effective against against severe disease. So, so far, those are the three that have been approved for emergency use by the FDA. They've all gone through all the clinical trials that any vaccine or drug would go through. Um, and as you mentioned, there are others that are still in the works. I think it's important for people to remember our ultimate goal is to vaccinate the entire globe. So everyone on, on the planet. So having one dose vaccines are important for low resource areas, having vaccines that don't need to be kept uh, as cold as the Modernas and the Pfizer's do are important. But for the, the, the public at large, for people, just getting a vaccine is the important thing for them to focus on. So I had an email from a family member the other night who says that he's still skeptical and, and remains hesitant to, to take the vaccine. So what should I say? What should be my response to someone who's still hesitant? So uh, I'm not surprised you've had that conversation. I think uh, we've all had those, those phone calls, whether it's with people that are close to us or people out in the community. And I think the message is that people ought to take advantage of this opportunity to protect their lives and protect the lives of people that they, that they care about. I know some people have been concerned. Uh, you know, you asked the question earlier about, well, why, why shouldn't I wait? And I think some of the fears people have, while they're understandable, the danger that we know about is right now. And we can, we can describe that danger, we can quantify that danger. We know this, uh, this virus is, uh, is not a friendly virus. It can cause very severe illness. It can cause long-term effects that we're still, still trying to understand. And it kills. And I think people ought to choose life. They ought to choose to protect their own lives for themselves, for the people they love, and the way of life that we have enjoyed and have missed and would like to get back to. Well, thank you, Dean Peterson, for those insightful answers to key questions about COVID-19. Thank you, President Corral, it's a pleasure.